Okay, so the first exercise is about uh, spectrum. So today we do only exercise about um, signal theory. So we have a signal like that, that is the spectrum. So I'm going to draw it here. Can you still see me? No, disappear everything. Oh my God, I have to remain in the office today. Okay. No, it's not seen canvas at the moment. I don't have any the internet to upload it, so <laughs> it's a mess today. Yeah, I, I, yeah, you can start to, to draw it, that one, the spectrum while I'm trying to connect here. Okay, it should be on again. Okay, so let me draw these things here. here. One volt here at frequency equals zero is the F axis zero. Then we have five volts. Then we have three volts. Try to make it as more realistic as possible. So three volt bit, not like me, three volt look like one volt. It's the same high, as you can see. Try to make it between one and five. Four volt, six volt. This is the best exercise in the morning because we are going slow. So you can follow. Okay, so then uh, omega zero, two omega zero, three omega zero, four omega zero, five omega zero. Okay, so this is the spectrum of the, um, of the signal. The question is, what is the fifth harmonic? So if any one of you now, what is the fifth harmonic in this uh, spectrum is, any suggestion is very welcome. Let me open here the chat. Now disappear the chat, where is it? So the fifth harmonic is uh, the one uh, at five uh, omega zero. So the answer was uh, A. Five omega zero. Okay, so question B. Uh, this question probably will be very similar to what you find in the blig. Uh, so, if you have any questions, just ask. So, question B: What is the DC component of this signal? Uh, you remember that um, in the spectrum, each line corresponds an harmonic, and uh, an harmonic is an oscillation, so a sinusoidal signal and uh, the harmonics at frequency zero is an oscillation with zero frequency, a sinusoidal signal with zero frequency, which means a constant. So the answer here is um, uh, one volt. Uh, so is the, is the component at zero frequency. So harmonic. Mm. Mm. 
because um, the harmonics start from omega zero. So omega zero is the first harmonic uh, called also fundamental harmonic. Then you have second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic, fifth harmonic. The harmonic in the zero frequency is you can call it zero harmonic number zero. Yeah. Mm. So you start like uh, IT guys, we start from uh, to count from zero rather than one. Yeah. Okay, but um, so the easiest way, it, the easy, okay, the easiest way is just counting uh, the number of harmonics, but exclude the the zero uh, the zero frequency harmonic. Yeah, this is the easiest one to do. Okay, so the harmonic five uh, five omega zero. This is the answer. See, uh, what is the bandwidth of the signal? Again, this is a low frequency signal because start from zero. And I told you that the bandwidth of a signal start from zero until the most significant harmonic that you see in the plot. In this case, you can see the most significant harmonic is at eight omega zero. Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. This is a great proof. I'm still sleeping. Uh, what is harmonic? Uh, oh yeah. Mm. So what is the DC component? Yeah. So the DC component is uh, the the harmonic at zero frequency. Mm. So harmonic at f equal zero. So it means uh, one volt. Let's also write one volt. So ugly here. Okay, question C. What is the bandwidth of this signal? Again, as I say, you start to count from zero until the most significant harmonic that you see in the plot. In this case, is eight omega zero. So the range uh, where you have significant harmonics is the bandwidth. Uh, this means eight omega zero. This is the bandwidth of this spectrum here, of this signal. So BW equal eight omega zero. Oh man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> can go slower. For me, it's just better because uh, I have more time to understand where I am and uh, which question it is. Okay. So um, anyway, the, the question is uh, in the in the. In uh, in the tablet, I'm just uh, writing the answer. The question are in the file. I will upload the file on the on the canvas. So if you don't have time, it's not you can then check it later on. Um, question C is the signal periodic or aperiodic? We saw yesterday that uh, periodic signal has a spectrum made of lines, uh, while aperiodic signal or non-periodic signal has a spectrum which is a continuous line. So this one is made by line. So this means that this one is a, a, per, a periodic signal. Mm. So yeah, right, periodic signal. Oh, Jesus. Okay, next. Okay, that one was the first exercise. Uh, hopefully it was not too difficult. In this file, I also wrote the answer. So then later on, if you didn't have time to see, you can also check the answer here. Um, this one was... Uh, Next, I did the first year I was teaching, so I was trying to write in Norwegian. If you don't understand what I write, then uh, just let me know. Uh, okay, here, let's try just to cover the solution. Just so 
We'll try to think about that. Okay, exercise two, although it's written three there. Okay, exercise two. Which one of these is periodic and which one of these is non-periodic? This should be still kind of like an easy task because as I said before, periodic signal are made by lines and uh, aperiodic or non-periodic are, the spectrum is a continuous function, so a line. So you should be immediately say that A is periodic, B is aperiodic or non-periodic, C is periodic. So I also drew it here. So for those one in Zoom, the three plot were this one here. Yeah, Ole, I cannot uh, upload the file because they don't have any connection here. So unfortunately, I'm a little confused at the moment. I have three computers in front of me and I don't know where, where I should look. So is, if you have any question, just write it down and I will try to answer. So this is the first one. This was the second one. This one was the other one. Okay, so uh, is uh, periodic. B is aperiodic and C is periodic. Yeah, so that's another interesting thing. So I think uh, will be in the next question, but we can also ask here and uh, well, we can also look about that. You have um, that the third plot is still made by line but you can see the line go in the negative frequency. So that spectrum there in C is probably obtained by using the complex Fourier series definition. While instead the, the number A is instead obtained from the real definition of the Fourier series. While of course the, 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 the B is obtained from the Fourier series, uh, Fourier transform. Mm. Okay, so let's see. Um, okay. This one for the moment we skip it. I still need to wake up. So uh, this calculation, we just make it a little after. We're going to something still um, feasible. Okay, here I cannot go like this. Um, let me draw before in uh, exercise three. So then, we have two signals and then this is time, this is time, this is a sinusoidal signal, this is a square wave, this is S1T, S2T, okay. So the question is which one of these has a larger uh, bandwidth? Both of them, they have frequency one kilohertz. Let me write also this detail. Yes, so um, let me open the chat here because we will see. Okay, so someone suggest S2. You can see from the chat here. 
Any idea? And also why? Again, the um, the bandwidth is the width of the of the spectrum. So the spectrum is larger if you have uh, a signal which is faster, has faster transition. So the second signal S2 has very fast transition. You can see in the uh, the square wave have a fast transition in respect to the sinusoidal signal. So we expect that the square wave has much larger spectrum than the spectrum of a sinusoidal signal because it changed faster. So, and um, if the spectrum of the square wave has much more harmonics, this means that the bandwidth is larger. So I'm expecting that the square wave has bigger or larger bandwidth than the sinusoidal signal because it changed faster. So the answer is that um, S2, let's write like this, bandwidth of S2 is larger than the bandwidth of S1. What happened here? Okay. Next exercise. So in the end, there are small exercises, but uh, should let you understand more or less what is going on. Okay, so this is still another exercise. I just wrote in the solution, but uh, it's difficult to cover it here. I should have printed, I went down to print, but I don't have connection, so nothing. Today is a failed lecture. So let me draw here in, uh, So we have a triangular wave and a square wave, S1 and S2. So I draw it here and then also here. Okay, and the question is still the same, exercise four. Which of these one has larger bandwidth? Uh, again, the square wave still have faster transition than the triangular wave. So of course, uh, also in this case, the square wave has larger bandwidth. So also in this case is BW2, BWS2 greater than BWS1. Yeah, I cannot, uh, as Ole asked, I cannot show all, only in Zoom because uh, I need to see the exercise and if my computer has no display and my, my screen is broken, so I cannot, if I turn off that, then I cannot see the, the text. So I have to keep that one in class on. I have to keep the document on. Okay. So then uh, next one, which is still the same, trapezoidal, uh, trapezoidal signal and square wave. So, exercise six. Let me see. Definitely. Thank you very much. So, I change here. Should be exercise five. Okay. Mm. Previous was four. So I change the number. T, T, T. Okay, uh, which one of these has uh, larger um, bandwidth? Again, of course, is the square wave. The transition is much faster in the square wave. So BWS2 is greater than BWS1. Yes. Um, let me see. Okay, next exercise. Let me go slow down so I don't show the solution. Yeah. 
Yeah. So let's uh, solve this uh, beautiful exercise here. Uh, we have a circuit C. So I draw C. Then we have an input signal. Maybe it can be voltage or current. Doesn't really matter. I call it S in. And then I have an output signal S out. Okay. The input signal has the spectrum I draw there. So is this one here? Frequency in hertz. And I have three, two, one. Then I have one K, two K, and three K. This is the spectrum of the input signal. Remember to write absolute value of a K because this is the magnitude spectrum. We have two parts, phase and magnitude. This is just the magnitude, so we are just neglecting the phase. Hmm. So then here, I also know the frequency response of the system, which is absolute value of HF, so only for the magnitude. I'm also neglecting also for the circuit, the phase frequency response to make it simple. So this is one, this is zero. 1.5 kilohertz F hertz. Okay, of course, uh, and we went, We want to find the spectrum of the output. Uh, this one you can see from the frequency response is a low pass filter. So I write here low pass filter. If someone of you don't see it, just let me know. Solution. And, um, Yes, yeah, so how do I do this? Again, this one can be solved uh, by doing the product and the calculation that I showed yesterday, but the simplest way is just to do the graphical method. So place all the uh, plot one over the other one, or even one overlap one over the other one. Yes? Okay. <laughs> and uh, so I'm just drawing it in the, in the next uh, page. I will draw them one over the other. So this one is, let me to be precise, call it A, K, in. So F, 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 A, K, out. And absolute value of F. Okay, so this is a way to do it. Uh, Three, two, one, and then I have. Um, I will show you also the other way uh, aside also. And this is like this. This is one, and this is zero. Okay, so here is kind of like uh, it's kind of like um, not difficult. If you see in my zoom. I just have to take the first line and then I do the projection down. And then I see that the frequency response there is one. So it means that I have to multiply that harmonic times one. So the, the output spectrum will have an harmonic at the same frequency with the same amplitude, three. And um, the same for the second harmonic, I do the projection. But you see now the, if you can see in zoom, the um, yes is after the cutoff frequency. That's correct. Where the frequency response is zero, so two times zero is zero. So there is no harmonic here. So here there is no harmonic, and the same also for the third harmonic. Yeah. So the spectrum of the output signal is just one harmonic at one kilohertz, which amplitude has three volt. And now my question is, do you know what is the signal in time which has this spectrum? Because remember the, the procedure for finding the solution, you, what you wanna find is S out uh, in time, okay? So what we are actually interested in is to know the waveform in time. 
We are just using the spectrum uh, because it's easy to, to find out the solution, the spectrum of the output, but then we have to transform the spectrum of the output in time. In this case, it's actually very uh, simple. So any one of you? Yeah, correct. Because remember that uh, each line in a spectrum represent an oscillation or a cosinusoidal signal. And uh, in this case, the output has only one line. So it means that the output is just one sinusoidal signal. So here, I just write here like this. So the time representation of this uh, spectrum here, so S out T is just a cosinusoidal signal with amplitude three. Mm. So between three and minus three, it oscillate. Uh, because uh, the definition that we use for the um, for the Fourier series is uh, st equal to a zero divided by two plus a sum between k from one to infinity of a k cosine of k omega zero t plus phi k. So, okay. So, okay. So then uh, I can write it here. So the definition of uh, the Fourier series is equal to a zero divided by two plus sum k equal one infinity of a k cos k omega zero t plus phi k. Mm -hmm. So we have only one harmonic, so there will be only one terms in this sum, which will be cosinusoidal. But again, you can also draw a sinusoidal signal but then you have to add the phase in the term of the, of the formula. So it's, it's just the same, yeah. 90 degree phase shift is, yeah. Hmm. I will also show you another way to solve this, which is maybe more f faster maybe. It's still the same method, but um, maybe I suggest to do this way. So method two, I write here. So instead of to place the plot one over the other one, you, you draw everything in one plot. Two and one. Okay, so this is my, uh, and then I do like this. Da, 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 da. Okay, so um, if you see the zoom, then uh, what happened is that uh, here is even simpler because uh, only you, you can think that only those lines that are inside the filter, so inside of the rectangular, they will go through the output. So here you can see there is only one line that is inside of the filter, only one line inside of the rectangular. So only one line will go to the output. Okay, this one maybe is faster. That one, uh, okay, as I say last time, uh, if you have uh, that the signal is uh, very, let's say relatively simple, um, you can extract the for mathematical formulas uh, of the signal ST, and then you can use the formulas for the Fourier series to extract the AK and the VK. Uh, for example, AK was, uh, uh, two divided by t integral of minus t divided by two t divided by two s t a minus j k omega zero. You can calculate. Correct. That is a one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, three volt is a one, so the amplitude of the first harmonic. Uh, two volt here is uh, a two, and the one volt there is uh, a three. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, um, but most of the time it's not uh, possible to find a formulas for uh, a signal in time. So what you do is usually you ask MATLAB or another software to calculate uh, the spectrum directly, yeah. But once you have the input spectrum that you know, you know how to calculate now the output spectrum, yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's see. 
So again, in the file, you should find even more comments than what I do, but. Mm. This is another exercise. I already spoiled the solution, but I think you already know the, the method. So I, let me draw it in zoom as in T. So we have still one input. We have a circuit. Try to do on your own if you, if you can. So if I, if is correct. So we have one volt here, two volt, three volt, two volt and one volt. So, uh, one, two, three, two, one. So it's one K, three K, five K, seven K, nine K. Let me know if it's difficult so I can, I can uh, explain better, hopefully. Okay, and then the filter. So th this is the spectrum of the input. And then we have the frequency response of the circuit C, which is uh, HF. And this time we have uh, this uh, frequency response here. One and zero. The cutoff frequency is at eight kilohertz. Mm. So then uh, let's go to solve it very easy. The, the question is always to find the output spectrum to output the output signal, uh, the output spectrum mainly. Uh, then if we are able to find also the signal in time, that would be very, would be great, but not always is simple. So S out F. Okay, so what I do here is just to draw the filter over the uh, input spectrum. So I do like this. So if you look about zoom, you can see that I draw the filter in the same plot of the input spectrum. And uh, now you can see the only line that is under the, the filter is just that one at nine kilohertz. So only that one passed through the filter. The other one, they are all removed by the filter, okay? So the answer is trivially uh, only one harmonic with one volt amplitude at nine kilohertz. Uh, remember always to put the unit in the x-axis. Great. And again, what is the signal in time? One harmonic, so one sinusoidal or cosinusoidal signal as you want. Anyway, they are just shifted of 90 degrees, so it's not a big deal. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if the next exit is fast to finish in four minutes. Oh yeah, this is interesting. Yeah, we can do it this one quite fast. Okay, let me write in zoom. I lost the count of which exercise we are. Exercise six probably, exercise six maybe. Okay, so I'm drawing a spectrum here, which is a periodic signal, of course, because it's made by line, one volt, three volt, one volt, two volt, three volt. Probably at a certain point, this actually become boring for you because it's too easy, but don't worry, little by little will become more difficult. I'm not going step by step. So this one is the spectrum of the 
of a signal, ST. And uh, I want to build a filter which just extract the seventh harmonic. So let me put here 1K, 3K, 5K, 7K, 9K, 11K, 13K, 15K. And the frequency unit is theirs. So what is the shape? Let's say an ideal filter, okay? So what is the shape uh, of the filter that we need? Um, first of all, which is the seventh harmonic? At, at which uh, frequency it is placed, the seventh harmonic? So we have, uh, we have to just count the line, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The seventh harmonic is the one that is placed at 13 kilohertz. That one is the seventh harmonic. So we need to a filter which just let pass that harmonic there. And you know, uh, there is one filter, which is an ideal filter, which let pass only uh, a certain uh, signal in a certain frequency, range frequency, which is called pass band filter. Okay. And the, 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 um, the frequency response of a pass band filter is something like this. So this is the filter that we need. Uh, the point is that the passband filter is characterized by two frequency. One is called FC1 and one is called FC2 because it has two cutoff frequency. And the question is, of course, you have to design it. So you have to decide where should be FC1 and where should be FC2, right? What, where should we place them in your opinion? Yeah, so it should be practically slightly before 13 kilos and slightly after uh, 13 kilos. So for example, we can decide FC1 12 kilohertz and FC2 14 kilohertz, for example, right? So this one, uh, 12 kilohertz, and this one, 14 kilohertz. Yeah, that's it. So this filter will make pass just the harmonic at uh, 13 kilohertz. No, no, we, you, you don't need, yeah. We just designed the, the ideal filter. Later on, I will, there will be a little bit, little will become more difficult. So we have to then design the filter with the circuit and so on. So we are reaching there little by little. Yeah. Well, that's why, because in my clock uh, is 3 a.m. I didn't understand. Okay, yeah, we can do, do a break, yeah.
Okay, so I have to repeat everything. Okay, great. Okay, I will repeat very fast all the problem. Uh, we have a signal uh, with which spectrum is uh, this one that is shown in Zoom. And uh, is a periodic signal because it's made by lines and uh, is probably a triangular waves. Um, you send this signal on a, on, a, on, a, on a cable and this cable is subjected to radio uh, electromagnetic waves, maybe created by a Bluetooth device, I don't know, a radio or whatever. And so at the output of this cable, you have that the, the signal as a spectrum, which is the original one, plus also the noise, which is generated by the electromagnetic wave. Uh, so the uh, problem asks you to design a filter which remove the noise or at least attenuate the noise. Uh, and in this case, of course, uh, we need uh, um, a low pass filter because the noise is at high frequency. So we have to remove uh, what is at high frequency. So we have to just design a low pass filter, which cutoff frequency can be any value between seven kilohertz and one gigahertz. Um, in our case, in my case, I chose 100 kilohertz and the solution is 10 kilohertz. It doesn't really matter because the filter is an ideal filter. If it was a real filter, then would be different. The position of the cutoff frequency would actually make the difference. And I will show you later on. Uh, yeah. Mm. So that was the, the exercise. Okay. And um, oh, finally, we are going to do something real. Uh, let me see. Uh, so in the previous exercise, you work with an ideal filter and now we have to design a real filter. So I'm not sure if the problem is the same. Let me see. Yeah, it's the same. Oh, what did I do here? It should be the same, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. So, um, okay, so we want to design a real filter. Uh, the simplest way to design a low pass filter, of course, is uh, RC circuit, as you know. So let me draw it. So I'm going to design, so I'm going to solve the same problem that I did now, but with a real filter, okay? So I'm going to draw RC filter, which is a low pass filter. And now the problem is how do I design this one? Um, yeah, so the design is a little tricky. So I will start to show you one example of one uh, low pass filter in order to understand then how to design a real low pass filter for our situation. So I'm considering the case of one kilo and one nanofarad. This is one kind of like uh, digression so this filter here is not precisely the filter i'm going to draw to design for uh, my noise it's just to show you one interesting result which will help us to design the real filter later on so i'm going to consider it, uh, one uh, rc low pass filter with r is equal one kilo and c equal one nanofarad so r one kilo and c one nanofarad now if you want to find the the real uh, frequency response, you know, the, the ideal one is this one here. And the real one is instead this one here. Of course, they are slightly different. Okay. And, uh, but there is an important result that we have to extract from this design. To understand that we have to solve, uh, we have to find the formulas for the frequency response of this uh, circuit. So I hope that everyone remember from LL how to do it. So HF is equal to, I like to write H omega, but you know, it's the same. Remember H omega is equal V out divided by V in. How much is the formulas of V out? V out is equal to V in multiply four impedance of the capacitance divided by the resistance plus the impedance of the capacitance equal to V in multiply four one over. Let me write it like this one over G omega C 
divide by r plus one over g omega c equal to yeah boring stuff i know and uh, then here we're taking common so i just put the result one over g omega cr okay and um, now again what we what we are interesting in multiply for v in of course is the absolute value of the frequency response is equal to absolute value of v out divided by v in so here is absolute value of one divided by one plus g omega c r hmm and this is trivial then we just write one divided by square root of one plus omega square c square r square i'm not going to detail again how to calculate these things i i think i hope you remember that okay so uh now what i'm going to do is Yeah, I can vent them. So uh, hmm. Yeah, they are oh my god, ganges. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Okay, so now what I want to show you is um, is trying to understand how the frequency response change uh, with a qualitative method. So we understand how the curve decrease, okay? Because again, we expect from the picture I show you that the frequency response is one for low frequency and then start to decrease like this. But how does decrease? So how do I know how much is the value of the frequency response at a certain frequency outside of the bandwidth of the, of the low pass filter? I will show you how to, how to do that. So I have to copy again that, uh, that uh, formula there. These more mathematical analysis things, but. Okay, so you know that, let's, let's start to do this. Uh, you know the frequency response uh, uh, at the cutoff frequency, right? So if I evaluate the frequency response at the cutoff frequency, so at omega equal omega c, how much is the result? Well, if you don't remember, then we just substitute omega with omega c. Omega c is equal one uh, divided by rc because it's the cutoff frequency. So here I write one over RC square, multiply for R square C square, one divide by, then this one simplify with this. And then under the square root, we have one plus one, which is probably two. And then we have one over square root of two. Mm. Yeah, because, um, let me write it here, red. So let me move this one away. So the cutoff frequency, uh, as you probably used to see in LLC, is equal one over two pi RC. And you remember that omega C is equal yeah. two pi times FC, yeah. which means that the two pi there go away and remain one over rc hmm. so um, 
there. Okay. So we have one over square root of two. Hmm. And let's now to evaluate the same function at 10 times omega, omega C. Let's see what happened. So I'm going to do H omega equal 10 omega C. So here I have to just write 10 RC square. Multiply for a square, C square. So simplify with that. One over square root of one plus 100. How much is uh, one divided by square root of 101? Let's see who give the correct answer without calculator, of course. Correct. Correct because whenever you are engineer, right? So 100 is much bigger than one. So we neglect one and remain square root of 100. The square root of 100 is 10. So one divided by 10 is 0 0.1 approximately. Okay. So 0 0.1. Hmm. So this means that if your signal is at 10 times the cutoff frequency, the frequency response is one tenth which means that the filter divide by, by of 10 times your input signal, okay? Let's, let, let's try to proceed and try to calculate uh, the frequency response at 100 FC. Maybe some of you already know the answer. Square root of one plus, uh, I say 100, right? So 100 divided by RC square times r square c square. <sighs> one plus 100 square. How much is one divided by square root of uh, 10,001? Great. Mm. Yeah, we are magic engineer and we just, uh, we just don't care about small unit here. So one is negligible and remains 0 0.01. So it means that here F is equal FC times 100. Did you do the same before? Yes, okay. You see, sometimes I use F, sometimes I use omega, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so it means that at the frequency, 100 times of the cutoff frequency, you have that the filter attenuate of 100 times. So I can repeat this one actually for 1000, but you will see that uh, the filter will attenuate of 1000 times. So you can see that after 10 times of the cutoff frequency, the attenuation decrease of 10 times, every time that the, the frequency increase of 10 times, okay? So the point is that uh, after the cutoff frequency, okay, you can say that the frequency response is equal to F divided by FC. Sorry, it's the opposite, FC divided by F. Because uh, let's say that you have uh, the cutoff frequency of one kilohertz, right? And then you have uh, uh, your signal is at 10 times uh, the cutoff frequency, which means 10 kilohertz. You know in that point, the frequency response will reduce of, uh, will be one divided by 10, right? And 
let's do an example. So if the cutoff frequency is one kilohertz and your signal is at 10 kilohertz, so it means 10 times of the cutoff, you know that this one should be 0 0.1 as it is indeed, right? So it means that after the cutoff frequency, this filter decrease always of 10 times if you increase of 10 times the frequency. So they are proportional, okay? So this is an interesting frequency because it's an interesting formula because it may, it make very simple to, for you to estimate what is the frequency response after the cutoff frequency, okay? Yeah, you cannot use that. Yeah, correct, correct, correct. Mm. Correct, correct, Ole. That is how to find is practically the slope. Mm. Okay, so let's go back to the initial filter. So practically all of this exercise was, was just to show you that uh, the frequency response, the magnitude of the frequency response of a filter RC can be easily found by doing FC divided by F. So we don't need a complex number, we don't need imaginary numbers. So you have to just think with your logic and then you can extract simple formulas. Uh, okay, so in our case, if you want, for example, to attenuate the noise, okay, at least 100 times, where should it be the cutoff frequency? In your opinion. So we are again to the previous problem where we have the noise at high frequency, which start from one gigahertz and finish at three gigahertz. Your signal is a periodic signal, which are harmonic from one kilohertz to seven kilohertz. And now you have to design a real filter, RC, uh, which attenuates at least 100 times the noise, where the cutoff frequency should be. So think a little. So someone say here 100 kilos. So again, let me write on, uh, on Zoom also. So design real RC filter, low pass filter. Right. A low pass filter, which attenuates the noise at least uh, ugly things 100 times. And I also draw again the plot of the spectrum so you remember the, the problem that we did before. Okay. This one was the original problem. So, and we want to design a filter which attenuates the noise at least of 100 times. This means practically that um, the frequency response where the noise start should be at least, should be at least 0 0.01 because you want to attenuate of 100 times. Uh, of course, then the, the frequency response decrease so at higher frequency, you will have higher attenuation. But um, any idea where it should be? The cutoff frequency? 10 megahertz. Someone say 10 megahertz. In, uh, in uh, Zoom, I have uh, 10 kilohertz. OK. So the answer is indeed uh, 10 megahertz. Why? Because uh, at one gigahertz, you want that the attenuation is, uh, you, you, you know that the attenuation should be 100 times, which means that the frequency response should be 0 0.01. So what we have to do is just take the, frequent, the formula that I gave you before and reverse it, okay? So let me see. 
HF is equal FC divided by F. I reverse it. So the, the problem could have been uh, easy uh, solved just by reversing this, but yeah. Okay, this is the formulas for the cutoff frequency. And now the problem is just what value I give F? Well, F is the, is the, is the point where the noise start, which is one gigahertz, okay? So here, F should be equal to one gigahertz. And we want that the attenuation there is one of the times, which means that the frequency response should be 0 0.01. So we know also what is the value of, of the HF. And we know that F should be one gigahertz. We know all the data to find FC, which is 10 megahertz. So this kind of problem, they are not uh, mathematic problems. So you have to just think, otherwise uh, you don't get the answer. If you don't understand the problem, then you cannot get the answer when is the problem become complicated. Hmm. Okay, but the problem is not finished because we designed the filter, but we have to choose the value for R and C, right? There. So FC is equal to one over the by two pi RC, but in this case we know it, which is uh, 10 megahertz. So what is the value that we choose for R and C? So what is the procedure to define the components value usually? So what could be the best way? Should I start with R? Should I start with C? I already did one example like that. So hopefully, any guess? So we have to start always with C because um, when you go to buy components, R is usually fabricated in many, many values. So you have one kilo, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, whatever. While C, you have less choice. Uh, there are less value available. So it's much better to find C, to set C, the side C, and then you find out the value of the resistance. Uh, so how do we find C? So how much, which value do we choose? Well, you can see that in the formulas for the cutoff frequency, RC is at the denominator. So it means that, uh, it means that the product between RC should be the opposite of megahertz. And the opposite of megahertz is microsecond. So it means the product of R and C should be around microsecond. So then you can have different combination. You can have nano times kilo, you can have pico times mega, that will give you a microsecond. So my choice, for example, usually I don't say it's a rule, but uh, with one nanofarad, usually you always get a good result. Okay, don't take it as a rule. Okay, then in the exam you say you told me one nanofarad, and then it's wrong. But most of the time, let's say ninety percent is one nanofarad is a good is a good value to get the reasonable value of R. So how much is R? Then we do uh, one divide by two pi, we inverse, reverse the formulas of FC, uh, one, two pi FC times C. Mm. Two pi multiply for FC, which is 10 megahertz, multiply times C, which is one nano. Uh, again, uh, nano, Simplify with mega, which become 
milik and then you have uh, one divided by two pi times ten milli milli something uh, of course will be millisecond but yeah it's right there and then one divided by one millisecond is one kilohertz <clears throat> so we write here kilohertz so here this look like a six this is very ugly zero okay so then uh, two pi is 6.28 approximately you consider it at six so is one divided by 60 or 0 0.1 divided by six how much is one divided by six Zero point one six. Zero point one six divided by ten is zero point zero one six. Okay, just verify the, if I say something wrong because it's morning, so I might have some issue also with my mind. But should be zero point zero one six more or less. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Hey, indeed, uh, yeah, see, this is what happened when you go to sleep at 3 a.m. Uh, yeah, so let me see where is the mistake. So this millisecond, kilo ohm, yeah, yeah, kilo ohm. And uh, so the result is 16, uh, 16 ohm, mm, approximately. Can someone confirm? Uh, maybe with the calculator, you know. Usually, yes, you have to always uh, use your brain before, but then you can double check with your calculator. If your calculator says something different, then you start to uh, you start to think maybe your mind was not uh, very good. Although you always have to say your mind is the best one, and the, maybe you push the, the wrong button in the calculator. Uh, but always double check it. Okay, so yes, for, so 15.9, so approximately 16, yeah. Okay, so um, of course these one are ugly, ugly value. And as electronic, you should, you see, this is a typical example when, where one nanofarad doesn't work because 60 ohm, 16 ohm is too small. Uh, remember that, uh, remember that the resistance usually should be higher because if the resistance is very small, it means the current will be very high. If the current will be very high, then it means that you dissipate a lot of power on the resistance. If the power is a lot in the resistance, then it means there is a lot of heat. And if the heat exceeds a certain value, then you have that the resistance burn, okay? So um, the trick is I definitely do not suggest to use 16 ohm. We can maybe use, uh, okay, so now this is also an interesting question. So how do I modify the value of R? So should I do the calculation again? What is your, uh, your proposed method to find the more reasonable value of R? Okay, but still too much calculation. We, we we have to do something fast. Correct, correct. So if we increase, for example, 100 times uh, 16 ohm, then the capacitance decrease of. Sorry, if the yeah, if the if the resistance increases 100 times, the capacitance has decreased 100 times. Yeah. So um, we can choose R equal to I don't know, 1.6 kilo ohm, and C. So R has increased the 100 times, C has to decrease the 100 times. So then C should be equal to 10 picofarad. Was it, right? Yeah. Mm. Much better, but again, uh, this, is, this should be come out from the experience. You could, in theory, ideally stop here, but 16 picofarad is not a good value. 
The reason is because when you build it on circuit, uh, there are some parasitic elements uh, which have uh, which have a value around picofarad. Okay, so if you put uh, one component of 10 picofarad on your breadboard or on your circuit, it's very probable that the parasitic component in the circuit will go to modify that value. So this is better to find another intermediate value. So I maybe suggest 160 ohm and 100 picofarad, which is much better. Mm. What's that? Do? Yeah. So this is probably the best compromise for our components. Okay. So we minimize the effect of the parasitic, comp uh, parasitic element in the circuit. At the same time, we don't make uh, too low the resistance that the current is going to high. Okay. Uh, yes, so every time that you do an exercise, always verify that the resistance or the components uh, satisfy the standard E24. This I told you also last time. So this one has to satisfy the standard E24. Okay, I cannot check it because I don't have internet here. Can anyone open the E24 standard? Okay. Okay, so they are fint. Mm. Okay. Okay, yeah, so also let's say 1.6. Okay, so it's okay. So all the value can be found, uh, can be bought from uh, market or black market or whatever it is. Okay, so then uh, this exercise is finished. It might be slightly different uh, from, the, from what I wrote here. Uh, probably the example is different, but again, my point is always try to show you a real problem and also I really want to show you that uh, um, uh, you should just think to solve this kind of exercise. I don't know if the actual uh, procedure here will be the same, but more or less will be similar, probably. Uh, okay, let's go to another problem. Now we are talking about uh, another spectrum. Exercise, I don't know, 100. It doesn't really matter anymore. Um, you have a circuit C. You have an input signal, S in, an output signal, S out. This is pretty fast, so that's why I'm doing it now. So the spectrum of the input signal is this one here. So 1K, 2K, 3K. The frequency response of the field of the system is uh, this one here. 1.5K. If it's difficult, uh, just let me know, okay? So, Okay, and the problem is always asking, find out the output waveform, or in this case, the output spectrum. How to do that? Simple again, solution. So what do I draw the input spectrum? Ta, 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 and ta. And then I draw in the same plot, the filter. Okay. Again, 
the trick is that only what is under the filter pass through the filter. Okay, only what is under the red line. Um, so if you look about zoom, it should be pretty trivial to know what is the output spectrum. Oh, this is very ugly. Yep. There it is. That's the output. Yeah. I just want to emphasize here that the input signal, of course, in this case, the spectrum is a continuous line, so it's probably an aperiodic signal. Oh, this one was the exact, uh, exciting exercise where I show you. Here actually I have the mathematical proof so of what we actually did on logic things. But you see the magic formula is HF is equal FC approximately divided by F. What is this? This is the same things that I did before, practically. Okay, we can maybe do it uh, later after the break. Okay, we can take a break. Before it burns through our dissertation, we um, the main issue is that uh, here we start to heat up very, very much, and when it heats, the copper may melt and may then create an opening here. Also, the power, also the heating could be an issue, but not as much. This is more a problem for um, make the circuit function. Yeah. So if you don't, if you don't make the twist enough large then it might not work because it breaks due to the high temperature. Yeah, but how do you, how do you know this formula uh, Many times there is, uh, for this, this one is from more a practical, uh, practical things. So many times there is a, a plot which relate current and resistance. So it's already given the, this kind of plot. So you can, knowing the current, you can actually then find out what is the resistance of the trace. And then you calculate the trace by using the list of the trace by using this. Mm. Mm. Yeah. There are some empirical curve. You, you cannot calculate it actually, it's not easy. Mm. Mm. But um, In the most of electronic circuit, uh, you have uh, your resistance. I can tell you, you can actually understand if your resistance will die or not. And the calculation is very simple uh, because the resistance you have in the lab, those ones move one like this, they usually are rated like uh, one fourth of watt, which means if the power over the resistance is more than one fourth of watt, which means 150 milliwatt. If the power is larger than this, then this one will burn. So you can calculate the current. You can use this formula here. If the current is too high, that the power becomes greater than 150 milliwatt, your resistance for sure will die. Is there some sort of standard with the resistors when you approach it? There are some uh, resistance of uh, 140 watt, 18 watt, 1 watt, 2 watt, 5 watt, and so on. Mm. So you can decide. The more is the power, the bigger is the resistance. We have some resistance of uh, 10 ohm, 
which is kind of like this. So it's more for electrical shit and so on. Next uh, problem. Oh, yeah. Hmm. A knock? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, let's try to do this problem here, which is practically identical of the one before. Or oh, for someone, okay, I remove it. But what time it is? Uh, 10 15. Okay, I can prove it later. Uh, yeah, I can prove it later. Okay, let's do this. Um, a signal is sent over a cable uh, which is subjected to electromagnetic waves at, as the same uh, axis as before. Uh, and then uh, the signal is corrupted by noise, but this time the signal has is probably an aperiodic signal, which spectrum is between zero and 100 kilohertz, and the noise start from one gigahertz. So now I draw it in zoom. So this is the spectrum of the input of the signal sent on the cable. So S omega. And this is the noise. which starts from one gigahertz. Mm. Uh, you have to build a circuit to remove the noise. This is pretty okay. Um, but I didn't say how many times. Okay, let's invent uh, the value now. So we have to design a filter, a real filter, which remove the noise and attenuated of uh, 1,000, uh, let me see. Mm. 1,000 times, yeah. Mm. So we need a filter which uh, attenuate the noise at least 1,000 times. So first of all, which kind of filter do we need? Low pass filter. Mm -hmm. So I draw it like this. Now the question is where should be the cutoff frequency? Sorry? Uh, yeah, that's correct because. Uh, we have it attenuation 1,000 time of 1,000, uh, 1,000 um, time of the frequency of the cutoff. Mm. So. This is the formulas. one divided by 1,000 equal to, okay, this one is one gigahertz. Uh, FC is equal to divided by 1,000, which means one megahertz. Hmm. And now, which kind of filter do you want to do? Do you want to design? Okay, just to spice it up the things, we cannot use RC circuit. We have to use something else. Yeah, RL circuit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's design this filter, RL. 
So how is the, the drawing of the RL filter, low pass filter? Mm. Can you just go back a little bit? Yeah. Mm. I think uh, Vanessa has the microphone on and the kind of echoing things, if you can, yeah. Mm. Um. To spice up our life. Uh, because otherwise, it's the same uh, is the same um, exercise as before. There is no practical reason. You could also design um, RC. Yeah, yeah. It's just to make a little different the exercise. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Ole. I saw the. Um, I saw that. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> Let me know when you are done. Yeah, is is this uh, where the noise start? That's the value of. Mm. Here, the trick is very much understanding the the problem because uh, in the oblique, maybe I will tell you, the middle of the spectrum of the noise should be attenuated of one thousand times. So if you put then in that problem. Uh, one gigahertz, that would be wrong. Okay, so be be sure that you understand uh, how to set up the formula. Hmm. I like in the oblique to change just a little. Uh, the problem that we, we see in class because you usually tend to copy the same mechanism that we see in class and then you fail. Because you actually don't think about the problem itself. Uh, electronic is like this, many problems, they are very similar to each other, but if you just change one thing, then the context change and all the result change. So every problem that you solve should be, you have to think about it. Yeah, that's an ugly G. Let me, see. Let me just change it. <laughs> okay, I proceed then. Uh, low pass filter. Is this? L and R. What is the cutoff frequency formula? Anyone? Because you always tend to remember the RC, but then you forget uh, our friend inductance. Mm. Mm. Okay, so now we have to design the filter. And uh, how do we choose? Okay, first of all, FC, we say it is equal one megahertz, right? So here again, uh, we have a result of mega. So I don't know, you can use uh, nano Harry, maybe one nano Harry. So we set L is equal one nano Harry. Again, usually with nano, you always, most of the time, except the previous exercise, you get it right. Then you can always increase one and decrease the other one if the, anyway, if the value does not fit what you want, so. Okay, with one nano area, how much is the resistance? One divided by two pi FC divided by R. With my L. Hmm, like this. One divided by two pi, one megahertz times one nanoarray. 
And also, when you choose component, choose simple value. Don't choose uh, 3.3 nano area or 5 nano area. Just choose 1 or 10, or it simplifies a lot the calculation. So, yeah. So, nano times mega is equal to milli. 1 divided by milli is kilo. 1 divided by 6.28 is 1 divided by 6, and then 1 divided by 6 is 0 0.16. You see, in the end, it come out all, with, all the time the same number, so you will remember it in some way also. 0 0.16 kilo. So it means 160 ohm. That's it. Okay, uh, let me see if it's correct. Uh, yes, yeah, correct, it's not correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah, thank you. So let's see, because I'm still sleeping. Yeah, <clears throat> so let's do like this. R divided by 2 pi L. So then R is equal to pi L FC. Mm. Thank you very much. Mm. So two pi times one nano Harry multiply for one megahertz. Mega and nano go away, become uh, milli. So is uh, six point twenty eight milliohm, which is a very ugly number. I doubt you can find something like that. So um, then we are going to increase the resistance of one hundred times and we are going to reduce the inductance for 100 times. So let's say 600 and 600 ohm. Yeah, that's true. This time is, uh, is the opposite because we have L divided by R. So if the resistance go high, so let me write R is equal 600 ohm, approximately, right? So and L become, uh, uh, if I have to keep it constant, so also L has to increase of 100 times this time. Yeah, if, if uh, uh, 630 is in E24, then you can choose that, it's closer, yeah. But uh, I like to choose simple numbers, so 600. Again, I have to check if it's in E24, but if someone of you can check, then 6,2? Okay, then 620 is better. Mm. So in this case, in this case, it's better to increase the resistance because of course we have 6.28 milliohm. This is too small. It's much better to increase uh, the resistance. But you can see in the formulas of FC, if the resistance increase and we want to keep FC constant, then also L has to increase, right? So then, uh, then it's the trick. So, and the, way, the reason why we want to increase the resistance is because otherwise the current is too high. Hmm. So then I do R is equal 620 ohm. So this means that uh, I have to increase the inductance of uh, 100,000 times. So then L is equal to 
100 milli area. Hmm. Always double check my calculation. Yeah, but it should be okay. 100 milli area is still a human value and someone can still build it. Of course, it's kind of like uh, probably a coil like this, kind of like this is a big bomb. Huh? Yeah, if there is some error, just point it out now because otherwise I publish something. Because uh, what I do is R is in million, right? Uh, six, uh, let's say six million. So I want to increase until 600 ohm. So it means that I increase the resistance of 100,000 100, times. Yeah. Uh, L also has to increase of 100,000 100, times, and which means 100 milli Harry. Hmm. Yeah. But remember, if you have some value that is around Harry, then you're talking about some coil like this, and that's definitely not for electronic. So you have to think that this, the, this poor filter, you have to bring it like this around, so this doesn't make any sense. So milli Harry is okay. 100 milliard, it starts to be kind of huge, but for this exercise, we say it's okay. Okay. Um, okay, I want to show you something a little more practical now. Uh, let's say more close to a engineering problem. So you need a problem that you can have in your in your career maybe. Uh, so what happened in this problem? So this one I have to solve it in LT Spice. Hopefully I remember how to do it. But anyway, I have here the procedure. Uh, what happened is that you are measuring, you're in an hospital. You have, uh, um, so probably those one in Zoom cannot see it unfortunately, but uh, yeah, I will try to describe it. And then, uh, yeah, actually I cannot need to solve it because LT Spice will be there. So, okay, then I have to skip this one. Okay, I cannot do this because in Zoom they cannot see. Okay, 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 okay. That's, uh, that would be great. Yes. What's the do, Lillian? Welcome. Oh, this magic mathematic one. This is this is actually important, uh, but uh, it's mainly mathematics. So I will I will try to do it if there is some spare time. But I think it's more uh, important this one because this is show a practical issue. Uh, after that, we do that. Hmm. Um, Yes, so we have, uh, we have, uh, we are in the hospital and we have our device which record the heartbeat of a patient and the signal of the heartbeat is kind of look like that. Um, so what you do is you have your computer, whatever, you connect to the device with a cable uh, with, uh, it's called oximeter and you put it here and that one uh, record the uh, heartbeat. And you get this signal in your computer. I did, this one should be is the signal created by that device you put in the finger. Okay, then the device has to connect to your computer, so there is a cable in between. So you understand that maybe that room in the hospital has some radio or some device, electronic device, which introduce noise in the cable. Okay. Correct. Mm. And uh, so. Um, this is the actual spectrum of this signal here, the heartbeat, okay? And um, unfortunately, there is some noise in the room, okay, as shown here. And, uh, and then uh, you are practically have in your computer this ugly waveform here, okay? Which is practically this one. Ideally, it should be like this, 
okay? But due to the fact that there is noise, what actually you see in your computer is this, which is very ugly, okay? Uh, so your, your, your issue is that you have to design a filter which remove this noise in order you can see a better waveform, okay? Um, okay, here you just read and your company asks you to practically visualize correctly the signal. What will you do? Of course, here we have to uh, design a filter, okay? Okay, let me open LTSpice. This is another thing. Okay. So, uh, of course, uh, here, even if I do advanced, there is no way that I am able to set some parameter and create that signal there. Because this one creates pulses, creates sine wave, and so on. So of course the signal has to come from recording or whatever. And I save the signal in one file txt. This one here, it's called ACG noises. And I have to ask LTSpice to recall this file, this data here. If you see I, when I open it, probably will take forever because there are some, a lot of data. Let's see. I shouldn't do that. Okay, but uh, let's go here. So what you have to do is remember that if you want to import the file, this file here and the file that you are recalling has to be in the same folder, otherwise it doesn't work. So here what I do is clicking here, copy the name, going here, right click, advanced pw file paste okay in theory if my memory is correct uh, from what i did last year then uh, i should be able now this uh, sig signal generator here should be able to generate this uh, signal recorded there so what i do here you probably will see today at spice more in detail i saw someone of you already started actually to do the tutorial so V out here. Mm -hmm. Now I create a simulation in time. It's just running, it takes probably a little time. Mm. Hopefully. But in general, let's uh, open the problem while we are waiting. So what is your opinion here? What, of course, here we have to kind of like uh, design a filter, right? Because we have to remove the noise. Do you, just by looking this uh, waveform here, do you think we should design a low pass filter, an high pass filter, a passband filter? Of course, the best way to understand which filter you want is to see the spectrum. But already from here, you can already think about which kind of filter you need. What do you think? So the noise that is overlapping to the signal will be high frequency, low frequency. At least we should discriminate this. That's correct, because that's what happens when you have noise, right? So this is actually the signal, right? Is, is this signal here the same plus the noise? Okay, so ideally you should see this one, but because you add the noise, then you have this. Okay. 
Okay, here done. Okay. Uh, so I'm going now to plot the, the waveform generated, which should be the same as I showed you before. Uh, it take a little time because it's 80 seconds of recording. It could be definitely a real problem that you have in the hospital. But already from the actually the drawing, you should already understand here because as someone of you said, the reason why you see all uh, the, the, the waveform black is because there is a very fast variation of the signal. So you cannot actually see how the signal changes. So for sure, the noise is something that changed very fast, okay? So the noise, I'm expecting to see the noise at high frequency, okay? So just basing, just looking about the time, I can think about that probably the, I need the low pass filter, okay, for removing the noise. But again, this is qualitatively, so in time is also not easy to understand which filter you need. The best things is always know about the spectrum, okay? Um, so my signal finished at 50 seconds, so, okay, probably still okay. Let's have a look about the spectrum because uh, SPICE uh, can give us a lot of information. This one you will see also today, but this one seems some very ugly stuff. Uh, but again, there is a trick to make it more reasonable, which is this. Now you can see it's kind of a little better. And this part here is the part that I show here. This one here. So here, and, uh, and uh, you see there is a big spike here. So the spectrum can tell you immediately where is the noise. So you have uh, uh, noise at one kilohertz, okay? So now practically it's very easy to, to design the filter. At least let's see what kind of filter we can design. So we need a low pass filter, okay? We can build the RC low pass filter, okay? Where should be the cutoff frequency? Let's say that we want to start the ideal, your target is make the, remove as much as possible the noise, okay? So, but we don't know actually how much we can do that because if you make the cutoff frequency too, too low frequency, then you start to remove also your signal, okay? So where do you want to place here the cutoff frequency, for example? Any guess? Someone say in the, in the Zoom, how do I know that this one is the noise? Well, if you see, uh, start to draw again. If you see um, my picture here, um, this, okay, probably the x-axis is not very visible here, but uh, the signal change, your heartbeat of course uh, beat uh, kind of every second, more or less. So this one has, is changing very slowly, okay? <laughs> And uh, instead in the spectrum that I just show you, okay, uh, this, what is it? This part of one killer cannot be your heart. Otherwise you have the heart that's a bit like this and you practically have an heart attack or whatever. So it cannot be, this one cannot be related to the, your heartbeat. Okay, this is why this one is the noise. Uh, and you can see the, your spectrum of your signal is all low frequency because your heartbeat is slow, okay. Um, sorry, we can take under hertz, yeah, okay. So let's say under the earth, uh, let's use an RC circuit, okay. So how much should be the value of RNC? Someone can do the calculation. For a frequency of 100 hertz, cut off frequency. Now you should be expert about it. We did already two exercises, so. Let's see if some of you try to do on your own, try to calculate R and C, and let's see if your design is correct or not. Okay. 
let me know when you have some value. Let's see. And comma sex shilom. Let's see if your design is correct. That is why will tell us that. So this one is also what you will do today in the lab. So I just kind of like spoiling it. Um, Let's see where is your, this is the frequency response of your filter. Let's see where is the minus 3 dB point, which is where is the cutoff. Here I have my things. Let me take the cursor. So I'm looking there and say when it become minus 3 dB. Yeah, yeah, approximately 100, yeah. So it's a good, uh, good design. Okay, so I'm going to use this filter that you have designed here. Let's see what will be the output waveform. Okay. Close. The spectrum, I keep it. So I remember what is the noise here that I remove. And I played. Okay, here we have to wait a little, but uh, yes, let's see if it worked. But again, how much is the how much uh, small you think the line there at one kilos will become? What to do? Uh, yes, correct. Because you have that uh, your. Uh, your cutoff frequency is at one tenth of the frequency of the signal. So yeah, so we expect that that line there become ten times smaller. So now the amplitude of that line is uh, zero point uh, zero point eighty five maybe. It look like yeah. So I'm expecting that that line become zero point zero eighty five eighty five millivolt, if the design is correct. Mm. So let's see what kind of signal we get now after your filter. Maybe. Someday, yes. <sighs> if if you have uh, a lot of noise uh, as we have now, as you can see, indeed here, you cannot actually understand what's going on. You cannot actually understand here that this is an heartbeat signal. You see, because as you said, the amplitude of the noise is very, a lot, it's very wide. So as you said, is, is, this is an extreme case, okay? Probably you will not find the noise as, as big as this. But uh, this is just to show you that sometimes the noise make uh, very difficult to understand the signal. Mm. Um. Oh, no, I was pressing the wrong one, sorry. Here. It's start to be a little better, but still, 
can see there is still not too good. I can still not see it very well. Um, that's a good point. I remember that what you see in the spectrum are the harmonics. So actually the peak that you see here is the sum of all the harmonics. Does not mean that one peak in the spectrum will have the amplitude of 2.8. The peak that you see there is just the contribution of all the sum of the harmonics. So, hmm. ah, a little better, a little better, but for sure we can improve that. So you can make, for example, the cutoff a little smaller, for example, right? We can make it, uh, how, do we, how do we make it smaller? Maybe 10 times. We can make uh, the cutoff frequency definitely at 10 hertz, for example, at the limit. Let's see. That's not very good because we are attenuating a little bit also the spectrum of the, the signal, but at least it's a little more clean. So to do that, I can probably increase this one to 16 kilohertz. Mm. Kilo, sorry. Now, because in this case, I don't want to keep the cutoff frequency in the same position, but I want to reduce the cutoff frequency. So I have to just increase the resistance because uh, the cutoff frequency is equal one divided by two pi RC. If I increase R 10 times, the cutoff frequency reduces of 10 times. And this is what I want now because I want to remove more noise. So if I put the cutoff frequency at 10 Hertz, it means that you see the distance between the cutoff frequency and the noise is uh, 100 times. It means that now the noise should be smaller of 100 times. And now it's much better. Mm -hmm. You see the peak actually went down. It's not anymore 2.8, 2.2. This means that we also attenuate the signal. That makes sense, okay? Uh, again, this is actually at the moment is kind of like critical because we are modifying the amplitude of the signal. But you will see that with the knowledge that you will learn in this course, we can also put after one amplifier and we can restore the amplitude to 2.8. So it's not a big deal in the end. Hmm. <laughs> Null command. We can try. Let's see before how it is here. One period. Ah, a little better. Okay. We can try null command. But then we start to attenuate the. Mm. Mm. Remember that actually, this is a good point to, to emphasize one thing is that. Uh, uh, we always look about the magnitude, but the phase will have also some, something to say. Because the phase now, you can see the phase is practically zero for low frequency, but then the filter start to change also the phase as soon as the frequency increase. So if each harmonic is phase shifted by the filter, then you also change the shape of the wave. Because each harmonic is phase shifted a little bit and in different way. So when you sum them together, you might not get any more the waveform that you get, but it's another waveform. So the phase shift of the filter start to then play a, a certain role. But I don't know now if actually it will be relevant or not, uh, but it may happen. Let's see. Uh, someone say what is actually
So in the end, uh, my point is that yes, uh, the filter, especially uh, when you design a simple filter like this, uh, you have that also, if you want to remove the noise, you ended up probably to remove, uh, attenuate also your signal. So here, the best solution is actually use a second order filter. So a filter that is more steep, more like an ideal, okay? So um, actually what we could do is, for example, try to put another RC here. So it become a second order filter. And then this, in this way, we can keep the cutoff frequency a little farther from the signal, and, but we remove a lot of noise. Mm. Okay, it's okay. In the end, uh, probably we cannot improve it more because if we go lower in the cutoff, yes, we, we start to decrease in the same way the signal and the noise. So the ratio between noise and signal will be the same. Uh, here we have Wondrina, no? Yeah, that's the question. How you can, yeah, that's the hard. Okay, so let me let me draw it like this, so you can also see what is the new filter. So the new filter is this one here. You can see the cutoff is. Uh, Oh yeah, I didn't do, yeah, it's correct. So what I should have done is increase, not reduce. That's correct. Yes, yeah, so practically I didn't do anything. I got back to the initial, uh... okay, but you understood the concept that I want to show here. Otherwise we wait another 80 seconds just to show the plot and so on. Okay, so let me see. This one was just to show you that the LT spikes can be used for and you will have in the oblique one exercise like that. So if you did not understand, you won't find an exercise like this in the books. So you may have to read this. Um, yeah. Yeah, I will upload in Canvas, yeah. Um, yeah, remember that the exercise I do or the exercise I put in the oblique, I usually invent them. So you won't find similar exercise in the book. Uh, this is in order that you cannot check in internet the solution. Um, yeah. So uh, here this is, I would like to do this, but I think we are already 58, so I don't have time. This is mainly a mathematical issue. I just want pointed out one thing is that uh, these are the calculation for actually extract the spectrum of a square wave. And uh, what you actually, the main result of all of this calculation, which is more yeah, mathematic because you um, solve the integral and so on, is the following. Is that the square wave, the square wave that I showed there, has only odd harmonics, not even. So what happens is that you will have all the harmonics at omega zero, three omega zero, five omega zero, seven omega zero, and so on. The square wave does not have even harmonics, okay? And um, of course, in this case, you see that it's also in the negative part because I use the complex Fourier series definition. And uh, yeah, but in the oblique, uh, probably there will be a question, a tricky question, which is uh, what is the amplitude of the harmonic 100 in the square wave? And uh, I've seen uh, last year many students that start to calculate and start to solve the integral and so on. But the answer is very simple. You don't need any calculation because the, the square wave does not have even harmonics. So the 100 harmonics is zero. Yeah, hmm? yeah it will be 101, correct. Uh, I think we are done for today. So this is all mainly all the questions that you can find oblique. Hmm. Okay, so we are going to the lab now. Oblique three. Hmm. So I will put soon, uh, maybe next week I will put uh, the oblique three out.
so it starts to accumulate. So don't remain back. Otherwise, you have three oblique in one section to do. Okay, so the for listening is finished, and now we're going to lab.